Hello again, everybody. I'm Joel Watts, and you've got Mid-South Wrestling. Along with Jim Ross, I'll be commentating the action that you'll see in this terrific hour. Stay with us, because it will be a great hour. Just before the opening, you were watching scenes from Coco Ware's video, The Bird. We'll be seeing Coco Ware in action later on in this hour. Also, we'll see the Sheep Herders. Buzz Sawyer goes against Al Perez in a special challenge match, and Jake the Snake Roberts will be putting the TV title on the line. Also, Dr. Death Steve Williams will be receiving a special award. And right now, at this time, let's go to Jim Ross, who's standing by in the ring to uh, conduct a special interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Oliver Humperdinck at this time would like to make a statement about the man that you see in the ring. As you know, Jim Ross, and as everybody around the Mid-South knows, for the last three or four months, I've had a lot of trouble here. Trouble with guys like Jake the Snake, Hacksaw Duggan, and the rest of them. I know the people are happy about it, but I'm not too happy about it. I've lost a lot of good men. They've fallen away along the wayside due to injuries and that. But scouring the earth, as I always do, for suitable people for the House of Humperdinck, I've finally come up with what I'm calling the Great Equalizer. I've searched everywhere, and in the outreaches of Mongolia, I have found the gentleman you see with me today in the ring, Tyrus Bulba, the meanest, most devastating individual ever to come out of outer Mongolia. Now I know everybody has heard people say this guy is the toughest, that guy is the toughest, but you being an excellent judge of wrestling flesh, Seeing everybody in the world at one time or another, I just wish that you would stay with me during this match at ringside. Be my guest. Take a look at this man, and then after the match is over, I'm going to ask you a couple questions as to whether or not this is the finest piece of wrestling talent anybody in the world has ever discovered. So I'm ready to unveil to the people of the Mid-South right now my newest sensation, Harris Bulba. And ladies and gentlemen, Terrace Bulbo's opponent in the blue corner at 240 pounds from Texarkana, Arkansas. Please welcome Harry Jackson. This match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Your referee is Carl Fergie. <laughs> Harry Jackson. Terrace quick to the attack. Terrace Bulba, a man with a low center of gravity. Very stocky, powerful man. Humperdinck says that he's found this man from Mongolia. Humperdinck has found several great wrestlers and of course He's known worldwide for his reputation as being a fantastic manager. Terry Jackson fighting back, lashing out against the midsection of Terrace Bulba, but Bulba with some hard forearm smashes over the back. Now he was hitting right around the chest and lung area, and that'll drive the wind right out of you. A hard clothesline. You can hear that pop all the way across the arena. Bulba with some very well-placed knees to the head. Man, but he sets up for the pile driver. A reverse pile driver. Lateral press. Terrace Bulba makes quick work of Perry Jackson. Uh, Sir Oliver Humperdinck said that he would like to have a few words with Jim Ross after the match. Jim has entered the ring. Uh, just like I told you a little bit earlier, Ross, you've got to agree with me, and the fans of Mid-South have got to agree that this is the most awesome individual ever. And now, I'm about to unveil my three-fold plan to rid the Mid-South of the likes of Jake the Snake Roberts and Jim Hacksaw Duggan. First of all, the Mongolian is here to take care of people like Perry Jackson. And second of all, he's here to do... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Second of all, Sir Oliver, is this. <laughs> I can't believe this. Terrence Bulba has attacked Sir Oliver Humperdinck. What's going on here? It looks like Eddie Gilbert is behind this. He's not doing anything to Humperdinck. He sends with that reverse pile driver. One whole year. One whole year.
whole year. He has waited. What's the one year? What do you mean one year? One whole year I waited, Jim Ross. This man came to Mid South after I made the nightmare of the North American heavyweight champion. He told me that I could get lost. Well, I was growing up, boy. My daddy told me, "Don't get mad, get even," and I have, and I've got Doris Bubba. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more exciting Mid South wrestling right after this from the network. Along with Dark Journey in the ring, there's a lot of controversy at this point in time surrounding not only the North American Championship, but the Television Championship, but more importantly, when Jake the Snake Roberts ddt Dark Journey. I want to ask her a couple of questions. I'm going to talk to her. Don't you sit here and insult me. And don't you sit there and insult me. I'm not trying to insult first anyone. All, I want to ask a couple of questions. First of all, the North American title will come my way. Second of all, the television title will come my way. Third of all, Jake Roberts should be kicked out of Mid-South for DDT and Journey. He has no business with his hands on her. And these people are driving me crazy. Let me tell you something right now. I deserve a lot more respect and so does Journey, then Mid-South has given both of us. Now, Jake Roberts wants a piece of me. He knows where I am. He knows where I am. And as for the television title, Jake Roberts, you put your name on a dotted line, and Dick Slater will take the television title right along with the North American title. Ladies and gentlemen, this match, one fall with a 10-minute time limit, Introducing first in the red corner at 235 pounds from Tampa, Florida, accompanied by Dark Journey, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. His opponent in the blue corner at 227 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, Ricky Gibson. This match one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Your referee is Tommy Gilbert. One fall with a 10 minute time limit. It's gonna be a great match. Ricky Gibson against Dick Slater. Mr. Unpredictable ties up with Ricky Gibson. It should be a good scientific battle. Both these men, extremely good technical wrestlers, as we all know. And just before the match, I noticed that Dick Slater was uh, giving Dark Journey a little bit of extra help as she was getting out of the ring. She, of course, wearing a neck brace after being ddt by Jake the Snake Roberts. Dick Slater trying to get his way out of the leg scissors. He gets to his feet. Tommy Gilbert just, <laughs> just about got run over by Slater. I'm telling you, when you're inside that ring, it's a lot smaller than it seems. I've refereed several matches. And if you don't get out of the way and watch yourself all the, at all times, you can flat get wiped out. Ricky Gibson goes back to that leg scissors. Ricky's a master at leg holes. Slater trying to maneuver his way out of it. An attempt, but Ricky keeps it locked up. Ricky there, kind of a half pile driver type move, but I don't think... Uh, but he quite had the distance to really get a lot of momentum into it. Slater breaks free. But Ricky Gibson's holding his head. This could be a disadvantageous position for Ricky. Slater with a headbutt. I've seen Slater use that move many times before successfully. That headbutt when he's in there tight. That's a good move. But Ricky Gibson reverses it and gets back into the leg scissors. Great move on Gibson's part. Stay with us, because coming up, we've got Al Perez against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer in a special challenge bout. Perez, of course, challenging Sawyer, and Sawyer is up to it. We saw him 
last week here on Mid-South after Al Perez was demonstrating his belly-to-back suit play on a dummy. Buzz Sawyer came out, put his two cents in. Basically, they challenged one another right there, but Sawyer, using a little bit of discretion, left the ring right then and there. Also see Coco Beware and the Sheep Herders, both of their debut here on Mid-South. Dick Slater with a reversal, and Ricky Gibson with a reversal. He goes back into the hammerlock. Now Gibson is showing us his strategy in this match here. He obviously has a game plan. He wants to keep Slater in tight and keep him tied up with a lot of holes. And frankly, I think that that's a fine strategy for Ricky to use against Dick Slater. Slater's a brawler. Arm bar and twist. Slater's up to a base now. At this point, he could be mobile. Oh, a hard knee lift to the midsection. Slater turns the tables. Quite a chop he hit Ricky Gibson with then. End of the ring, Slater looked like he was setting for a high vertical back suit play. Ricky Gibson goes to the ropes. But even though he got out of the suit play, he's still in a bad way because he's stuck in there against the ropes. And you don't always want to be in there. Oh, punishing elbow. Crowd's chanting for Ricky Gibson. Ricky's another one of those. There you see Dark Journey on the outside of the ring. That neck brace is there, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't count her out of involvement in a match. What a suplex by Slater and an unorthodox reversal on Gibson's part, but it worked. Are there anything you could do to get away from that free count? It could come off a quick. Oh, nice, nice reversal by Ricky Gibson. See a lot of great reversals this far in the match. Slater went for that pile driver. Hard forearm to the chin. Gibson went for it, but Dick Slater is such a quick thinker. That's why they call him Mr. Unpredictable. There again, he tries for the vertical back play, but he hits him with a front. Slater can turn the tables on you so, so fast. Lateral press, one, two, and three. Referee Tommy Gilbert makes a three count. Right on the match, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick. Slater. Dick Slater, the winner of the match. Coming up next, we're going to have Al Perez against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer in a special challenge. We'll be back right after these words from the Mid-South Wrestling Network. <laughs> Challenge match scheduled to be one ball with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner at 260 pounds from St. Petersburg, Florida, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. Buzz Sawyer's opponent scheduled to be Al Perez. We understand we, uh, he's had airline problems. No, 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 no. Where's that tap? Come on, Perez. I'll stab him around like a wee Al Perez was scheduled to wrestle Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. He has had transportation problems. Time went to Japan, 
saw the world, and I'm over there, and I'm reading the wrestling magazine, and I see Bud Sawyer out here barking around, and he run Hacksaw Jim Duggan out of his home, out of Mid-South. But let me tell you something, Sawyer. There's not a man on the face of this earth that's going to run me out of Mid-South, especially, especially you. You come out here with your chain, well, okay, you want to break rules, Hacksaw Duggan, I can break rules too, Betty, and that's two, five, four. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more right after this from the Mid-South Network. You know, Brass didn't have the guts. He didn't even show up. And what have I been doing? I've been beating myself with a chain. I've been getting ready for that two by four you're talking about. I want you to bring it because, yeah, that's right. I'm the mad dog. And I'm madder than you ever seen me or any human being watching me right now. You come on, you tough guy. You bring that two by four and you hit me with it and you beat me with it. And it's just gonna make me that much stronger. And then when I drop this chain across your teeth and you wake up the next morning and you can't even eat and you're spitting up and you're going crazy. You're mine, dude. You're mine. I've gotten your kind of match with the old dog collar. I thought I had things going my way. Made me feel pretty good, but you kind of pulled one of your fancy damn tricks and sent old Hacksaw Duggan to, to the old hospital for a little while to think about things. Count the holes in my ceiling. Well, I did a lot of counting and I did a lot of thinking. And it came down to one thing. No matter what else goes on, no matter what happens with my lady, no matter what happens to my family, no matter what happens to my car, this is between you and me, baby. So no matter what else goes on, it's just going to be you and me in the ring. And I don't care about a wrestling match. I don't care about rules. All I care about is you. And by God, tough guy, you're going to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first in the red corner from New York City, weighing 230 pounds, Broadway Joe Malcolm. Introducing from Union, Tennessee, 229 pounds, the Birdman, Coco Ware. Coco, beware. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Coming to the ring, Morris Day's Bird bringing him to the ring. Quite a tremendous athlete from Union, Union City, Tennessee, Joe, going against Broadway, Joe Malcolm. He is a great athlete, that's for sure. Arm drag. Coco drew the bird there. Collar and elbow tie-up. Coco Ware, as many of you know, is here in the Mid-South a little over a year ago with uh, his partner Norvell Austin. They were pretty young things. Coco was quite successful in that tag team and he's glad to be back in the Mid-South. What a great guy. Perfectly executed hip toss by Coco Ware. A very powerfully built young man. Extremely quick. Great aptitude for wrestling. He is tough as nails. Talking with him before he went on the program, uh, went on the air today. He's uh, really came up the hard way. He's earned everything he's ever got. And that's the way it is in the Mid-South. You earn it right here. By the way, Joe, with that headlock he has it locked in pretty tight 
Hope you like our new mat cover here at the beautiful Tulsa Convention Center. Great crowd on hand. People in Tulsa have really rallied behind Mid-South. Coco Ware electrifying this crowd. Tornado oh, man. Kick. He nailed Broadway Joe right on the kisser. Man, he got up there, Joe. He was right eye level with Broadway Joe Malcolm, and he's so explosive, is Coco Ware. Coco Beware, to be exact. Sure is. He's got very powerful legs, and brother, those drop kicks will flat lay on your back just like they did to Joe Malcolm just then. He was an all-state nose guard in, uh, in Tennessee in high school, Joe, by the way. Let's watch that drop kick again in slow motion if we can. Coco Ware applying that arm bar and twist. He's just about to get a fall there. Malcolm, one of his shoulders was down. Great officiating there by Tommy Gilbert. He's always, now here's that drop kick. Man, what impact. Full extension of the legs, perfectly executed by Coco Ware. Malcolm now trying to turn the table and he is doing so. Coco Ware will see his resiliency here. Malcolm throws him hard into the ropes and Malcolm kind of methodical there. He moved in. Short forearms to the side of the head of Coco Ware. Coco goes to the second rope. Another drop kick. Man, alive. Tommy Gilbert got it. Coco Beware. Coco Beware. Coco Beware. Hey, he's got it. Coco Beware. He sure does. He has all the tools, and there he is, shaking it around. We'll be back with more Mid-South Wrestling action. We'll see the Sheep Herders right after this. America! Ball in the blue corner. From Dallas, Texas, weighing 205 pounds, Steve Dahl. And from St. Petersburg, Florida, weighing 220 pounds, Brett Wayne Sawyer. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the red corner, the combined weight of 482 pounds, the New Zealand Sheep Herders. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you hear the introductions and there you see one of the most devastating tag team combinations in professional wrestling today. They have won championships in 28 countries. They have been fined and suspended as much as any tag team in wrestling history. The New Zealand Sheep Herders, Luke Williams and Butch Miller and Joe, this is our first opportunity to see them here in live action on Mid-South Wrestling. I'm looking forward to seeing this wrestling machine because I really feel that's indeed what they are. Well, they're world renowned. They definitely have an international reputation, as you said, Jim, and they are going straight to the attack as, uh, as they most usually do. Butch Miller really pounding Steve Dahl. You won't see a team any more methodical, any smoother as far as their teamwork is concerned than the New Zealand Sheep Herders. Luke Williams in the ring now against Steve Dahl. These men have very little regard for their own bodies. They have absolutely none for their opponents. They ask no quarter and most certainly will give none. Well, they're at a good point in their athletic careers because they're veterans of the ring, but they still have, they still have maturity and enough strength on their side that they can compete with just about any tag team anywhere. And they're so punishing and vicious. Like you said, they have such a high threshold of pain, they seem to thrive on it. And Joel, one other thing, they have controlled Steve Dahl from the outset, quite obviously, but they have kept him in the white and in the red. In other words, the mat covered their side of the ring for the balance of this contest. Steve Dahl has not entered the blue, his corner, since this match started. That's classic tag team strategy. And like I said before, these two men are veterans. They're going to take every, take full advantage of every tactical strategy that they possibly can as they set Steve Dahl up for a double. Double knee drop into the chest. The New Zealand Sheep Herders 
with a very decisive victory over the duo of Steve Dahl and Brett Wayne Sawyer. And Sawyer never appeared in the ring. He never was tagged. And they are so anti-American, so pro-New Zealand are these two men. And ladies and gentlemen, in just a few moments, we'll be back with you on Mid-South Wrestling. And Jake Roberts will defend the television title right after we come back from this network timeout. You're looking at the toughest, roughest the tag team the world has ever known. You're looking at the most travel tag team the world has ever known. Ladies and gentlemen, the first countries have lived in different countries with my And left everybody in our way laying down this right. And now, and now we're in the Mid-South. We're going to carry on the third way. We're going to destroy all the opposition. We're going to knock them down like... Like, like you knocked down brick walls. That's right. And the New Zealand sheep birders are going after the titles. And, and whatever the New Zealand sheep birders go after, the like New Zealand sheep birders get. Corner, first of all, from Havana, Cuba, weighing 240 pounds, Gustavo Mendoza. From Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 250 pounds, the master of the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is for the Mid-South television title. One fall or television time remaining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mid-South Wrestling. Jim Ross and Joel Watts with you. Thank you very much for being with us. This match for the Mid-South Television title, the man of the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts, going against the man from Havana, Cuba, Gustavo Mendoza. Collar and elbow tie-up. Great ovation for Jake the Snake Roberts. As I said before, a great crowd on hand here at the Tulsa Convention Center. People very enthusiastic. I, there's kind of an air of electricity in the town of Tulsa. People really get behind. Mid-South Wrestling, they love the TV taping here. Gustavo Mendoza complaining of Jake the Snake's possible usage of the hair. Jake is a man who is not unfamiliar with that type of tactic. Oh, he certainly is, and I think he's probably as proficient with those tactics as anything, but not as proficient as he is with his DDT. Overhand wrist lock. Mendoza now pulling the hair quite blatantly, and the referee was out of position. Mendoza moved him such. Looks like he pulled the tights there, Joel, to me. Mendoza knows that this is a this is the biggest match of Mendoza's career, or at least thus far since he's been in the Mid-South, for the television title. And when you're going for the television title on the number one wrestling team in the country, it makes it even more prestigious. We're not saying that out of our own ego. We're saying it statistically. All the Arbitron ratings support what we say as far as our show being number one. And we don't owe that to the fans at home. They make it such. Mendoza ties up Jake with a headlock. A right cross to the face of Jake. He can feel it. You know, Joel, I've seen Mendoza in some arenas around the Mid-South. He's double tough, but Jake Roberts turning the tide. Jake Roberts will control the momentum. In like 90% of the matches that you'll see him in, oh, he's gone. Mendoza barely blocked it and got out of the ring. He was moments away from the lights being turned out. He just about had his head rammed right into the mat. I'm sure he's got to drink the snake. I'm sure he knows that that DDT Probably one of the most punishing weapons in all of wrestling. Dick well, Murdoch, however, has been claiming lately that uh, that his brain buster could be even more dangerous than the DDT. I don't know. Both of them are extremely powerful. Of course, the situation between he and Slater is heating up. But look at this. Listen to the people chanting for Jake. 
the DDT. They don't want to see an arm bar twist. They want to see the DDT. Jake going for it one more time. You know, if Jake has a fault, as far as the DDT is concerned, even though you can hit it from an instant, just, I mean, an eyelash, you can have it. Sometimes he is a little blatant with, uh, depending on the DDT, of course, I guess, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. When you got the DDT, what else do you need, really? Yeah, I think whenever a guy gets into a front face lock with Jake, they know uh, exactly what to look for. Mendoza with that headlock. Oh, another right cross to the head. Mendoza really popped him. And Jake the Snake again feels it. Mendoza's a powerful man. You can see by Jake the Snake's reaction that, that uh, he knows how to throw a punch. The man from Havana exhorting Jake Roberts to stand up. Another right hand found a home. Jake trying to shake the cobwebs there somewhat. Oh, Gustavo Mendoza going for the pin. Jake Roberts quickly kicks out. Jake Roberts has had some tremendous battles with Dick Slater. As you can see from our earlier interview, that situation is far from over really getting out of hand. Nice snap mare there, Joel, now with the rear chin lock. Jake Roberts, he really has the advantage over most athletes as far as his leverage is concerned. We spoke of Dick Murdoch earlier. We're going to see Murdoch in six-man tag action. Well, that's going to be tremendous, and it's coming up in just a few moments. I'm also going to be in a very special presentation I'm extremely pleased to participate in involving Steve Dr. Death Williams. Most certainly, a lot of great things coming up. Stay with us. Jake the Snake is really applying the pressure on the head of Gustavo Mendoza. As you can see, is a lot of pain on the face of Mendoza. Jake, I guess, trying to wear down Mendoza, keep him on the mat. And You know, even though Mendoza is laying down on his back in this instance, he's having to expend a lot of energy right now just to keep his shoulders up off the mat. Yeah, Jake is, Jake is putting the, that, uh, his left shoulder, using it as a pressure point as he executes the headlock there. Jake got up a little bit too high on him and lost his leverage there. That's something you won't see Jake the Snake do too often. Now you see him sinking his hips and his back down, putting the pressure on the spinal column of Mendoza. But Mendoza gets up to a base, and Jake the Snake takes him back into a hammerlock. Oh, man, that elbow really found a home. Jake, I think, at that instant, should have tried to keep Mendoza down on the mat. But, of course, Jake can't execute his DDT unless he gets Mendoza up from the base. So. You know, maybe Jake had a game plan in mind. Here we go! Oh, man! Oh, he really nailed it. He got it! They knocked him head over heels and listen to this crowd. Jake the Snake getting a little bit cocky there. You better get that lateral press. Oh, yeah! Jake the Snake with the DDT and the victory. Look at this crowd. I'll tell you, Joel, he, he might have needed to get into a hurry but I think he could have got out, went out and got in a box of popcorn and come back and covered the guy. He, <laughs> he had him planted. He sure did. And Mendoza is still not moving around too gingerly. There's a young wrestling fan, a tremendous crowd here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There you see the man with the DDT, Dick Slater, beware. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got one of the greatest six-man tag matches in the history of television. We'll have it for you in just a few moments, right after this, from the exciting Mid-South Wrestling Network. I laugh and yet I gotta cry. First of all, right back in the notice qualification match, with a stipulation that Dark Journey is out with me, she's got to be searched. Well, you've already DDT'd her, and you told everybody that you wouldn't use a DDT against Dick Slater, and that's the reason why I have got the title held up by law. There's laws in this land, Jake Roberts, and you ought to try to learn about them. When you say one thing and do another, 
Well, it doesn't go my way, Jake Roberts, but now, no disqualification. The title's been held up. The DDT is legal. Well, see, Jake Roberts, I know now where to look for the DDT. I didn't before because you said you weren't going to use it. But now, Jake Roberts, I've got my keen sense about your DDT, and you stay away from Journey, and me and you will settle this thing once and for all. Fight lawyers. You spent your money on just like my ex-wife spent money on them. That's when I started disliking them, because they cost me something. Because you're not man enough to stand face to face and say, I can take it from you. You gotta go get some man with a nice little three-piece suit that spent his time in college, that's had the easy way out, and now you're taking the easy way out, Slater. Oh yeah, you're right. I did say I wouldn't use the DDT if Journey wasn't there. Well, she wasn't, and I did. So maybe I stand to be corrected, but not by a lawyer. Why don't you stand up and do it? The stipulation is this. When you look through all the bureaucratic crap, the stipulation is this. If she shows up at ringside, she's to be searched. And I will use the DDT. And as far as last time goes, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, Now, Snake, did you know it was her? Of course I did. And I'll do it again, Slater. Anything for the North American title.